Hello and welcome to this training model on oil and gas revenue recognition. The objective of this program is to deal with the challenges faced when applying revenue recognition requirements under IFRS due to common industry arrangements that often lead to complex revenue issues. In this course, we shall look at the meaning of revenue, how a revenue or sales transaction is determined, and finally, methods of recognizing revenue in extractive industries. What is revenue? It is the same as stock line sales arising from the sale of goods and services to a customer. Revenue can only be recognized if the risk and reward of ownership of the goods are completely transferred to the customer. Challenges faced in the determination of a sale include the timing of revenue recognition, swapping of petroleum products, and over on the lift. Timing of revenue recognition. Usually, revenue is recognized when title passes to the customer. This may be at delivery point in a refinery or storage tank, if it is at this point that title moves to the customer. Alternatively, this may be at point of lifting of crude oil. Swapping of petroleum product is simply the exchange of petroleum crude type between oil and gas operators. This is very common in the industry due to cost and marketing reasons. IAS 18 states that revenue shall only be recognized when goods and services of dissimilar nature and value are swapped. Meaning that when goods of similar nature are swapped, there is no sales transaction. The balancing payment generated during the swapping deal will usually be used as a basis for deciding whether the transaction is a sale, purchase, or a swap of similar products. Over and under leave common in the oil and gas operations. Joint venture arrangements, predominant in the oil and gas industry, as well as the timing of the lifting of coal, may lead to one operator pulling more or less coal than they are entitled during an accounting period. An overleaf results in an operator lifting more coal in excess of their entitlement while an underleaf is when lifting is below entitlement. The resulting asset or liability must be measured fully in relevant accounting standards. Suppose it costs $15 to produce a barrel of oil in an oil field jointly operated by oil companies A and B. If in an accounting period A overleaf oil from the field by $1,000 and sell it at market price of $35 per barrel, does an over or underleaf asset or liability result for company A and how will it be measured? Company A lifting more than it is entitled simply means it has an obligation to settle company B. And this could either be done physically through future production or in cash. Hence, company A should recognize an overlift liability in its books, while company B will recognize an underlift asset. The resulting asset or liability would initially be measured according to IAS 18 using the current market price of $35 per barrel. meaning an asset or liability of $35,000. IAS 39 further urges oil companies to revalue this asset or liability at balance sheet day using oil price at that point in time. Exercise Suppose company X and Y operate an oil fee with X having a 60% interest and Y 40% interest. During the year, a total cost of 
$500,000 was incurred and 25,000 barrels of oil produced. Company X lifted 20,000 barrels while Company Y lifted 5,000 barrels. Each lifting was sold at $42 per barrel. By the end of the year, the market price of oil dropped to $35 per barrel, determined the overlift liability for Company X as well as the corresponding accounting entries at both the lifting point and at the balance sheet date. Note that IAS 18 and IAS 39 state that the initial underlift asset and overlift liability must be treated as revenue or cost of sale, while changes in the value during subsequent revaluation should be regarded as other income or expenses. Therefore, at lifting point, Company A will adjust its cost of sale. by increasing it to 210,000, that is, by the overlift amount. Of 5,000 barrels, valued at $42 per barrel. Why it will, in its book, create an overlift payable account by an amount of 210 thousand dollars. By the end of the balance sheet year, the drop in the drop in oil prices will now lead to a revaluation of the overlift payable amount. So the overlift payable shall be reduced by thirty five thousand dollars, which represents the drop in oil price. Revenue recognition methods. How revenue should be recognized depends on the oil and gas contract with joint venture partners and relevant agreements with the state. This should therefore be read thoroughly as accounting standards do not provide any specific guides. However, the varying methods of revenue recognition could be grouped into two families. We have the sales method and the entitlement method. About 53% of U.S. oil companies uses the, the sales method, while about 40% make use of the entitlement method. Under the sales method, revenue is recognized only when working interest owner sells its share of coal. In this case, the matching cost concept is abused as expenses will not match revenue but rather working interest. In the entitlement method, revenue is a reflection of working interest share of total lifting, irrespective of who lifted. The under overlift accounting takes care of the imbalance resulting from actual sales and the entitled amount. What is the impact of over underlift on these two methods? In the sales method, there is no impact on the P and L. However, some companies will perform a year-end adjustment to show the under overlift as a separate line from total sales. However, proof reserve should be adjusted to accommodate for the imbalance. Entitlement method. In the entitlement method, proof reserve should also reflect the entitled oil or gas. A property owned 60% by A and 40% by B produces 100,000 barrels of oil, of which 45,000 barrels is sold by company A at $40 per barrel, and 55,000 barrels is sold by company B at the same price. The oil imbalance, therefore, is 15,000 barrels. The net revenue for the month and the corresponding balance sheet amount at the end of the month are calculated as follows. 
Under the entitlement method, each operator will only recognize a share of revenue based on their working interests. Therefore, since there was a total lifting of 100,000 barrels, Company A will only recognize 60%, while Company B will recognize 40%. This will therefore give them a revenue of 2.4 million and 1.6 million, respectively, for Company A and B. Under the sales method, revenue will be recognized based on actual lifting. Therefore, since Company A lifted 45,000 barrels and Company B lifted 55,000 barrels, they will both recognize a revenue of $1.8 million and $2.2 million respectively in their books of account. The corresponding balance sheet entries will therefore be as follows. In the balance sheet, the customer receivable amount will be the actual receipt expected from the sale of crude oil. Therefore, since Company A sold a total quantity of 45,000 barrels of oil, the customer receivable amount will therefore be 1.8 million and that for Company B will be 2.2 million. In the entitlement method, the underleaf receivable and the overleaf payable adjustment shall be made to account for the imbalance. Therefore, since company, company A lifted 45,000 barrels instead of 60,000 barrels, there will be an underleaf of 15,000 barrels. And this will therefore be adjusted in its box of account. So company A will therefore recognize an underleaf receivable of $600,000 while Company B will show an, an overlift payable of $600,000. In both methods, entitlement versus sales, the reserves or inventory must be adjusted. If we assume that before lifting, Company A had reserves of $900,000 Barrels and Company B had a reserve of 600,000. Then, after the lifting in the entitlement method, Company A and B would therefore be left with reserves of 840,000 barrels and 560,000 barrels, respectively. While under the sales method, they will be left with 855,000 barrels and 645. Thousand barrels respectively. Sorry, five hundred and forty-five thousand barrels respectively. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this course.